a new discovery which has not yet been published. It relates directly to the black communities across America. I'm, after here, I'm going to Bimini. As you said, I'm also going to speak at the Washita Conference again in Louisiana about this. But before I tell you about that, people will say, well, big deal. So what, why is history important at all? History is extremely important. Imagine if, if I could take from each one of you as an individual everything you knew about life to last week and just erase it. Where would you be? You, you'd be lost. You, you'd be incompetent. You wouldn't know how to plan for the future. And you do the same thing with a people. If you erase their history or you don't tell enough about their past, they also become incompetent and they can't fulfill the future. And that's why a lot of people in the black community have felt, well, how come all of the dreams of the civil rights movement aren't yet fulfilled? And one reason is because this history is still suppressed. It still isn't taught, but there's been a recent discovery which is going to blow the lid off of all that. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, basically, what science has now found, although this is suppressed for the most part, there have been some great researchers. You have some wonderful books that are like by Evan Van Sertema, who's talking about these things. This is not taught in your public schools, although it will be. The history that the children are learning today is not going to be history that's going to be taught in the next 25 years. It's radically different. We now know for a fact that long before Columbus, there were four major migrations of blacks to the Americas, different parts of the Americas, for totally different reasons, totally separated from each other by many centuries. But nonetheless, there were these black you can call them migrations, but they were not in China. I'll describe them. You can make up your own mind what they were. The most recent of these took place about 400 years before Columbus was even born. And it's all outlined in a marvelous book over there. It's called The Golden Trade of the Moors. And it is now known that the West African Kingdom of Mali had huge fleets of merchant vessels and that these kings these black kings of West Africa began sailing across the Atlantic to Mexico as early as 900 AD. Now, why did they do that? They did that for trade, not for conquest or invasion. They did this for trade. Mali was very wealthy in gold. They had lots of minerals. Some of the black kingdoms, they were called the Yoruba or the Benin. They were great workers in bronze. But the trouble with West Africa, and it's still a trouble today, not enough food. Fam Somehow, the black kings of Mali had preserved this tradition long before where there was this kingdom across the sea, a totally different one. It was very hard to reach. You needed to have uh, excellent ships and good sailors. And nobody in Europe was doing it this time. But if you cross that sea, this other kingdom across the Atlantic was very rich in a certain kind of food, which the people over there called maize, we now call corn. And these West African kings launched at least two major fleet trading ventures that went across the Atlantic 900 AD to about 1600 AD. And they brought over their bronze work and they taught the Mexican people, the ancient Mexican people who were then known as the Mayas. The Mayas had built up a great kingdom of their own, but 900 AD they were in decline really on the outs. Nobody knows exactly why, but their society was in decline. They were losing all of their technology. Then this, these black fleets came across from West Africa, from Mali, and they uh, presented a lot of uh, gold work, bronze work, and in return, they came back with shiploads of corn, maize. Now we know for sure that this actually happened because very recently, you'll see in the next issue of our magazine, not this issue, the next issue is coming out in about two weeks. This is part of it. The discoveries are happening so fast and furious, it's hard to keep track. They now have found that a certain type of maize or corn, which is growing in West Africa, has been growing there for many centuries, is not native to West Africa. It is a type of corn which comes from Mexico, could have only been brought over by these Mali seafarers over a thousand years ago. So this is a first concrete proof 
that they beat Columbus by centuries and were not just on a voyage of exploration. They were going back and forth, bringing corn back. Now, why do we know about that? Well, this trade stopped abruptly 1600 A.D. 1600 A.D., the Spanish, the Portuguese, run a real aggressive colonizing campaign, and they took over Africa, and they destroyed a lot of these kingdoms. And with the destruction of these kingdoms, went all the knowledge and all the history of these past trades. This is a tremendous lesson for us because, you know, we are so proud of our American civilization. We think it'll go on forever. But when a civilization falls, history tells us it takes almost all memory of it with it. Civilization is really very fragile. And that's why these lessons from the past are very, very important. If we want to preserve our civilization, we have to learn what happened to these others that crashed. So we know for sure between 900 and 1600 A.D., Long before Columbus was even born, as I say, these blacks were trading, these black kingdoms were trading with Mexico. Uh, this, I have to refer to my notes just because this is new to me as well. There's also traditions in Mexico, ancient Mexico, of these black kings coming. And one of them was called by the Mayas, if I pronounce this right, Ekchua, which means the, the black calabash or the black gourd. It referred not only to his black skin color, but also this gourd that he brought over. This gourd has been portrayed in these Maya hieroglyphs. They, this guy is portrayed as a West African type of man, robes and everything. And he's holding a gourd in these glyphs. That gourd has actually been identified as a West African type of gourd. So here we're having wonderful proof that there were these contacts between Africa and Mexico. And they actually referred to him by this name. And it shows that the Mayas and these Mali civilizers, these Mali traders, got along really well. It wasn't a conquest. It wasn't one society taking over another. They both had things to offer each other. The Africans had to offer metallurgy and gold, and the Mayas had to offer corn.